Future was born in 1983 in Atlanta, Georgia. He is a pioneering figure in the world of hip hop and trap music. Renowned for his distinctive use of autotune, melodic delivery, and emotionally charged lyrics, he has become one of the most influential artists of the modern era. Future's music blends gritty street narratives with themes of success, heartbreak, and the highs and lows of fame, often set against hypnotic, atmospheric production. Rising to prominence in the early 2010s, uh, Future's breakout came with his debut album Pluto, followed by a series of charge upping mixtapes and albums that solidified his place in mainstream music. Projects like DS2 and Future so showcased his mastery of blending melod melody with raw emotion, earning critical and commercial success. Beyond his solo work, Future has collaborated with a wide range of artists, from Drake and The Weeknd to Young Thug, um, cementing his role as a central figure in shaping the sound of contemporary rap. His impact is not just limited to music, Future has also become a cultural icon, influencing fashion, slang and the overall aesthetic of trap music in the 21st century. Metro Boomin was born in 1993 in St. Louis, Missouri. He's one of the most influential producers in modern hip-hop, known for his dark, atmospheric beats and innovative production style. Metro Women has played a pivotal role in shaping the sound of trap music throughout the 2010s. He gained widespread recognition through his collaborations with uh, top-tier artists like Future, Drake, 21 Savage and Travis Scott, contributing to some of the most iconic tracks of the, of the decade. Um, Metro's breakthrough came with his work on Future's Honest and subsequent collaborations on hits like Mask Off and 21 Savage's um, Savage Mode, which was released in 2016. His signature sound, often characterized by eerie me melodies, hard hitting 808s, and subtle intricacies, has become a blueprint for modern trap production. In addition to his work as a producer, Metro Boomin has emerged as an artist in his own right releasing his debut, album, his debut solo album, Not All Heroes Wear Capes, which topped the Billboard charts and further solidified his position in the industry. His ability to craft memorable, mood-driven beats has made him a dominant force, influencing the trajectory of hip-hop production for years to come. Okay, so having introduced the artists, let's go straight to the album. Today I'm going to be reviewing We Don't Trust You, which was released the 22nd March 2024, this album is 59 minutes long and it features Kendrick Lamar, Travis Scott, Playboy Carty, The Weeknd and Rick Ross. First up, the title track, We Don't Trust You. This song is such a strong opener and honestly it's a perfect way to kick off the album. The beat starts out all mysterious and you can just tell something heavy is coming. Then Future jumps in and it's game on. His flow is sharp and the energy there it, it, and the energy is there from the start, straight up, it's a banger, couldn't ask for a better intro in my opinion. Next up is Young Metro featuring The Weeknd. Now this one is where the album really takes off, the vibe totally switches from the first track and you feel like, okay, the album has officially started now. The Weeknd's feature is flawless, his voice bends perfectly with the track, like he's just in his own here, another banger. This one's gonna be a repeat for sure. Third track, it's Ice Attack. Now this is a good one too. It's got a change of pace right in the middle and I love that. It keeps you on your toes. Not quite a banger like the first two, but still a great track. By this point, I'm loving everything I'm hearing on this album. Then we hit Type Sheet featuring Travis Scott and Playboy Cardi. The beat on this one is crazy. Metro Bowman is just flexing in here. And the features from Travis and Cardi feel fresh and exciting, they all bring something to the table, and the energy on this track is on point. Another banger, no question. Now let's talk about Claustrophobic, honestly this is the weakest track of, of the album so far. It's not a bad song by any means, but compared to the high level we've, we've been getting, it's definitely a step down. I'd say it's mid, but giving the rest of the album, it still hopped, holds up. Next up we have Like That and Oh My God with this one. I mean, it might just be the track of the, the, the best track on the album. Kendrick Lamar's feature on this is insane. The beat is one of Metro's best and Kendrick brings that energy that only he can. The lyrics, the flows, everything about this track is top tier. 
and considering all like the rap battle and drama this feature um, has kicked off um, this is the one that people are going to be talking about for a long time and I mean j yeah it's just like an excellent song for me then we've got Slime Teen and Magic Don Juan um, these tracks aren't as strong as the others but with an album this good it's almost expected um, that, the, that the level is a little below in some tracks um, that said, there are still really catchy songs and the flows are tight, I wouldn't skip them and they don't hit as hard as some of the other songs. Um, now we're back to Travis Scott with Cinderella. Um, this one's another highlight for sure, the flows are insane and Travis absolutely kills it. Metro and Future keep the energy high and this is one of the best tracks of the album for me easily, um, as well as um, like that. And then the second half of the album, it's a little heavier. One in Other Time comes out of nowhere with a completely different flow. It's not bad, but it doesn't hit the same as the earlier tracks. Still, it's a decent song. Um, then we've got Fright and Ain't No Love. These are solid tracks with nice beats. They feel more, cla more like classic future tracks with those familiar flows and vibes. Good song, but nothing groundbreaking. Now, Everyday Hustle featuring Rick Ross. And man, I mean, this is probably the weakest feature on the album. Rick Ross, I think, just changes the vibe too much on this song. And while some might find this refreshing, it didn't really work for me. It's a nice song, but definitely not a standout on the album. And finally, we close things out with GTA, Seen It All, uh, WTFYM, and Where My Twin At. Um, these are solid tracks to finish the album. Seen It All really stands out for me, the album ends strong enough for me and with tracks that feel like a more classic feature, not like we, we saw with Running Out of Time. Um, overall, this album is amazing, it's packed with bangers and some seriously great features. Um, even though the second half gets a, a little heavier, it doesn't drag too much and the quality stays very high. Sure, there are a couple of skips maybe, but I mean, we all know that this album wasn't going to be perfect. Um, the chemistry between Metro Woman and Future is on point on the, in the whole of the album. And these two have proven, once again, they're one of the best duos in modern rap. Alright, so to wrap things up, let's break down the marks for Futures and Metro Boomin's We Don't Trust You. Performance, um, Futures' performance on We Don't Trust You is pretty gay overall. He manages to keep that signature sound we all know and love while also playing around a bit with his style on a few tracks. There's some experimentation here and there, but nothing too wild. It's still very much a future album. Even though there's a weaker section in the album, it doesn't drag or feel too, too repetitive. So yeah, solid work from future, but nothing groundbreaking. It's an 85 for me. When it comes to lyrics, I'm giving this, this thing a 70. We know Future's never been about super deep wallplay and that holds true in here. The leaks are good, but they're not mind-blowing. Tracks like, like that, um, they show glimpses of lyrical greatness, especially with Kendrick Lamar's Future. But overall, Future keeps it straightforward, which works for him, but it could have been a bit better. Now, the Futures are one of the strongest parts of this album. I'm giving this part an 85. Playboy Carty, The Weeknd, Travis Scott, and especially Kendrick Lamar, or like that, they all brought their A-game. Uh, Kendrick's feature is easily one of the best of the year. The only thing holding this score back is Rick Ross's feature, which didn't hit the same level as the others. Plus, I feel like the end of the album could have used one or, one or two more features, uh, just to keep it fresh, but overall, the features are fire. Production, 95. Uh, Metro Booming absolutely crushed it with the production on this album. The beats are insane. There's no repetition or even a hint of similarity, which is impressive for an album of this length. Every track feels unique and Metro keeps you engaged the whole way through. The beat on Like That is really one of Metro's best ever. Um, the production is what really elevates this project to the next level. This album has a ton of replay values, so giving, I'm giving an 85 on this part. This, there are some serious bangers here that you want to keep on repeat, no question. It doesn't feel like a long album either, which is a good thing. It's easier to run through it again. 
The only reason this isn't rated higher is because of the second half of the album. While it's not bad, it's definitely weaker compared to the first half. Still, there's enough heat here to keep you coming back. Um, so, overall, We Don't Trust You is a strong project with a mix of future solid performance, top tier features, uh, incredible production and plenty of bangers to keep you coming back. It's definitely an album worth checking out. Um, there are a few weaker moments here and there, but nothing that drags it down too much. Future and Metro Booming continue to prove that they're, the, that they're one of the best duos in modern rap, no doubt about it. And that's it from me. Um, definitely give this album a spin. I mean, you won't regret it at all.